Brethren, the time has come when you must act for yourselves. It is an old and true saying that if hereditary bondmen would be free, they must themselves strike the blow. You can plead your own cause and do the work of emancipation better than any others. The combined powers of Europe have placed their broad seal of disapprobation upon the African slave trade, but in the slaveholding parts of the United States, the trade is as brisk as ever. They buy and sell you as though you were brute beasts. Look around you and behold the bosoms of your loving wives heaving with untold agonies. Hear the cries of your poor children. Remember the stripes your fathers bore. Think of the torture and disgrace of your noble mothers. Think of your wretched sisters, loving virtue and purity, as they are driven into concubinage and are exposed to the unbridled lusts of incarnate devils. Think of the undying glory that hangs around the ancient name of Africa. And forget not that you are native-born American citizens, and as such, you are justly entitled to all the rights that are granted to the freest. Think how many tears you have poured out upon the soil which you have cultivated with unrequited toil and enriched with your blood, and then go to your lordly enslavers and tell them plainly that you are determined to be free. Appeal to their sense of justice and tell them that they have no more right to oppress you than you have to enslave them. Entreat them to remove the grievous burdens which they have imposed upon you, and to remunerate you for your labor. Promise them renewed diligence in the cultivation of the soil, that they will render to you an equivalent for your services. Point them to the increase of happiness and prosperity in the British West Indies since the Act of Emancipation. Tell them in language which they cannot misunderstand, of the exceeding sinfulness of slavery, and of a future judgment, and of the righteous retributions of an indignant God. Inform them that all you desire is freedom, and that nothing else will suffice. Do this, and forever after cease to toil for the heartless tyrants who give you no other reward but stripes and abuse. If they then commence the work of death, they, and not you, will be responsible for the consequences. You had better all die. Die immediately, than live slaves and entail your wretchedness upon your posterity. If you would be free in this generation, here is your only hope. However much you and all of us may desire it, there is not much hope of redemption without the shedding of blood. If you must bleed, let it all come at once. Rather die free men than live to be slaves. It is impossible, like the children of Israel, to make a grand exodus from the land of bondage. The pharaohs are on both sides of the blood-red waters. You cannot move en masse to the dominions of the British Queen, nor can you pass through Florida and overrun Texas and at last find peace in Mexico. The propagators of American slavery are spending their blood and treasure that they may plant the black flag in the heart of Mexico and riot in the halls of the Montezumas. In the language of the Reverend Robert Hall, when addressing the volunteers of Bristol, who are rushing forth to repel the invasion of Napoleon, who threaten to lay waste the fair homes of England. Religion is too much interested in your behalf, not to shed over you her most gracious influences. In 1822, Denmark Vesey of South Carolina formed a plan for the liberation of his fellow men. In the whole history of human efforts to overthrow slavery, a more complicated and tremendous plan was never formed. He was betrayed by the treachery of his own people and died a martyr to freedom. Many a brave hero fell, but history, faithful to her high trust, will transcribe his name on the same monument with Moses, Hampton, Tell, Bruce and Wallace, Toussaint Louverture, Lafayette, and Washington. That tremendous movement shook the whole empire of slavery. The guilty soul thieves were overwhelmed with fear. It is a matter of fact that at that time, and in consequence of the threatened revolution, the slave states talked strongly of emancipation, but they blew but one blast of the trumpet of freedom and then laid it aside. As these men became quiet, the slaveholders ceased to talk about emancipation, 
and now behold your condition today. Angels sigh over it, and humanity has long since exhausted her tears and weeping on your account. The patriotic Nathaniel Turner followed Denmark Vesey. He was goaded to desperation by wrong and injustice. By despotism, his name has been recorded on the list of infamy, and future generations will remember him among the noble and brave. Next arose the immortal Joseph Sinke, the hero of the Amistad. He was a native African, and by the help of God, he emancipated a whole shipload of his fellow men on the high seas. And he now sings of liberty on the sunny hills of Africa, and beneath his native palm trees, where he hears the lion roar and feels himself as free as that king of the forest. Noble men, those who have fallen in freedom's conflict, their memories will be cherished by the true-hearted and the God-fearing in all future generations. Those who are living, their names are surrounded by a halo of glory. Brethren, arise, arise. Strike for your lives and liberties. Now is the day and the hour. Let every slave throughout the land do this, and the days of slavery are numbered. You cannot be more oppressed than you have been. You cannot suffer greater cruelties than you have already. Rather die free men than to live to be slaves. Remember that you are four millions. It is in your power so to torment the God-cursed slaveholders that they will be glad to let you go free. If the scale was turned, and black men were the masters and white men the slaves, every destructive agent and element would be employed to lay the oppressor low. Danger and death would hang over their heads day and night. Let your motto be resistance, resistance, resistance. No oppressed people have ever secured their liberty without resistance. What kind of resistance you had better make, you must decide by the circumstances that surround you and according to the suggestion of expediency. Brethren, adieu. Trust in the living God. Labor for the peace of the human race and remember that you are four millions. Henry Highland Garnet, an address to the slaves of the United States, 1843.